All right then, welcome back. We are going to continue with some notes on polynomial functions. I'm going to start you off with the general format of a polynomial function. So I wrote here, a polynomial function can be written in the form of f of x equals a sub n x to the n plus a sub n minus 1 x to the n minus 1 plus a sub n minus 2 x to the n minus 2 plus dot 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 plus a sub 3 x cubed plus a sub 2 x squared plus a sub 1 x to the first plus a sub 0 and that is where a polynomial function would end if it were in the correct format so n is the non-negative integer that you see as the highest exponent right there it's referred to as the degree of the polynomial function. A sub n is the leading coefficient, and a sub 0 is the constant term. A sub n is right there, a sub 0 right there. So let's give a little bit of an example and see what's going on here, okay? Um, well, actually, yeah, let's go ahead give that example. Alrighty, so here we go. Um, let's say that I gave you f of x equal to 3x to the 8th minus 5x to the 7th plus 2x to the 6th plus dot 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 plus 12x cubed minus 8x squared plus, let's say, 4x minus 9. And I want you to see how this expression that I just gave, or this equation that I just gave you, follows that of a polynomial function right up here. So my a sub n would be this 3, a sub n would equal 3. This is my leading coefficient. My n itself would be the degree up here, which would be my 8, which is the highest degree I see. This is called the degree of the polynomial function. And when I go all the way over to the end over here and I look at that negative 9, my a sub 0 would be negative 9 and that would be my constant term. It's called a constant term because there's no variable attached to it. And the variable is going to be the feature of the polynomial function that allows that term to vary or to change. And if there is no variable attached to this negative 9, well then, you know, obviously the negative 9 is not going to be changing, so it will be constant. Alrighty, I want you to realize that my exponents, whether I started, let me see, grab another color here. Uh, let's go with blue. Whether I start with the 8 or whatever the exponent I start with, I could have started with x to the 12th or x to the 4th or x to the, I don't know, it doesn't matter, 6, whatever exponent I start with, I should have the exponents in descending order. So 8, 7, 6. I notice that the 5 and the 4 are missing, and this is really kind of hard to do, but the 5 and the 4 are missing. Here's 3, here's 2, here's an understood 1 right here, even though you don't see it, right? There's an understood 1 is this exponent. And then we don't see any exponent here on this on this x because I don't see an x. But if I were to write an x, it would be x to the 0, and there would be my 0. So my exponents get listed in descending order. The coefficient that's attached to the highest exponent is considered the leading coefficient. That highest exponent was right there with that 8. And that constant term on the end, let's switch colors. Let's go to the blue. 
this constant term here on the end match this. Alrighty. So I'm hoping that is pretty clear. I want you to understand that the the degree of the, of the polynomial function, and as a matter of fact, not just the degree of the polynomial function, but every single exponent as we go down this polynomial function, every single exponent that's there, whether it's the 8 or the 7 or the 6 or the 3 or the 2 or the 1 or the 0, every exponent that exists in a polynomial function has to be a non-negative integer. Now when the exponents are non-negative integers, that means that they can be either a 0, which is non-negative, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. And look, that's exactly what they are. You had 0, you had 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 6, 7, and 8. You are not allowed to have any fractional exponents. And let me just talk to you about why you can't have that. If you had a fractional exponent, like let's say x to the 1 half. x to the 1 half is considered the square root of x. And we can't have any square roots involved at all for polynomial functions. None at all. We can't have any exceptions to our domain. Polynomial functions have a domain that is all real numbers because I don't have any roots whatsoever. I also don't have any denominators. I can't have x to the negative 2 because that would be 1 over x squared and I'm not allowed to have any denominators whatsoever with a variable in them for polynomial functions. Polynomial functions have to have all the variables right up on top, never in the denominator, and I can't have any roots or anything else like that either. So no negative exponents, no fractional exponents. My exponents are nice and simple integers or possibly zero, but they have to be positive integers or zero. Okay? So that's what non-negative integer is trying to get at right here. Non-negative integer. Non-negative integer meaning zero, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Makes for a really nice function actually. It makes it easy to play with. Okay, let's go through a few examples and see if everybody's understanding what's going on. Um, is there anything else I want to say about this one before I leave? Let me just ask you a couple more questions about it. What do you think uh, a sub 3 is? So a sub 3, according to this definition right up here, should be the leading, not the leading coefficient, but the coefficient attached to the x cubed term. So if I find my x cubed term, which is right here, my coefficient is 12. And therefore, my a sub 3 is 12. All right, I'm going to backtrack that and stop that from being so messy on my paper. I will write a sub 3 is 12 back again. What about if I wanted a sub 7? What's a sub 7? Now, I hope you realize that that is the coefficient of the x to the 7th term. Here is the x to the 7th term right here. And the coefficient on that x to the seventh term is actually a negative 5. And I know that some of you might think that that's a subtraction sign, not a negative sign. But if it is a subtraction sign, well, then we're going to have to turn it to a plus sign and turn my 5 negative anyway. So it doesn't matter. The coefficient becomes a negative 5. All right, I don't know if I did that any justice or not. Let's see what I'm talking about here. I got kind of sloppy when I was writing that. If this negative sign is something you want to consider a subtraction symbol, then that's fine, but then it doesn't match the format of the polynomial function up here having a plus sign everywhere. So I would have to take that minus sign and add the opposite. That's how we subtract. And now, of course, my leading coefficient is really negative 5. I don't bother doing that. I just take the sign that's right next to the number just like most of you do, okay? Um, and nothing else is really tricky, so I think I'm going to leave it right there and stop and go on to the next problem. All right, I'm going to leave all that right there. I'm going to do, I'm going to get a little bit smaller and I'm going to squish these down a little bit, so I'm going to start calling this example one and see if I can get you on this. 
Okay, so I'm going to give you f of x is equal to 4x to the 5th minus 3x to the 4th plus 12x cubed minus 8x squared plus 5x plus 1. And I would like for you to tell me the degree of the polynomial function, the leading coefficient of the polynomial function, uh, the constant term of the polynomial function, and then let's just get a little bit tricky here and let me just ask you for, let's say, a sub 3. All right. First off, is this in the proper format to match a polynomial function? The way that the definition was given to you up here. Way up here. This one, way up there. Is that matching that format? Am I starting high and am I hitting every exponent all the way down? And I sure am, aren't I? That's a 1. And this, again, would be x to the 0. So I have an exponent of 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. The highest exponent is indeed, you guessed it, that's your 5. Okay, so I am just going to backtrack these little things I just put in here. And that. Alright, so my degree is 5. My leading coefficient will be the coefficient that's attached to the x to the 5th term, which is right here. Right here, this 4 right here. This is my leading coefficient. Let me see, I have to go for that purple again. This 4 is my leading coefficient. So I will go ahead and write a 4 right here. And I will highlight that so you can see that that's where the leading coefficient comes from. My constant term is the term that's way on the end, way over here. Here's my constant term, positive 1. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to say positive 1, which I can just write 1. It means positive 1. And I will highlight that in its own color. I like mixing up my colors and doing something that's different. And then just for giggles, I asked for a sub 3. That should be the coefficient of the x cubed term, which is right there. And I need to switch up my color, don't I? Let's go for yellow this time. I like yellow. Okay. So I want to go for this coefficient, which is that 12. And that's my a sub 3. All right, Gina, that was not a good thing I just did. 12. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. And that's pretty much all we need to do right there. That was kind of an easy question. I am going to gather this thing together. And I'm going to squish it. And I'm going to put it right like that. And I'm going to try and give you a harder example now. Oops. So here is example two. Well, it was an imaginary example two. Here's example two. Uh, f of x is equal to 9x cubed minus 6 plus 8x to the fifth minus x to the 6 plus 12x minus 3x squared. Now in order for me to find my degree and my leading coefficient and my constant term, I'm going to have to manipulate this a little bit or at least have some, uh, I don't know, vision into the future as to what I would get if I did put this in order. Well, first off, I'm going to put it in order. I'm looking at f of x. I'm looking for the highest exponent that I can see anywhere throughout my whole polynomial function. And I'm hoping you see it right here with this with this 6. That's the highest exponent that I see. So I'm going to start here with this particular term, negative x to the 6. Now I'm going to be looking for an x to the 5th term, which would be right here. So plus 8x to the 5th. And now I want an x to the fourth term. I don't see an x to the fourth term. So I could put plus 0x to the fourth as a placeholder, but I don't want to, so I'm not going to. I'm going to go for an x to the third term now, which is right here. And this is plus 9x to the third. It's plus because the 9 is positive. I'm looking for an x squared term. I'm going to circle this right here negative 3x squared. 
I'm looking for an x term now. Notice I'm making my exponents get smaller and smaller and smaller and decrease by one each time. And then this right here must be my what? You guessed it. That's my constant term. So now figuring out the degree is pretty simple. It's the highest exponent that I see, which is 6. The leading coefficient is the coefficient that's attached to my x to the 6th term, which is negative 1. I know you don't see a 1 right here, but we understand that there's an understood 1 attached to that x to the 6, I hope. Uh, my a sub 0, which is my constant term, way over here on the end, right? Negative 6. And let me just ask you if you could tell me, please, what is a sub... 5. A sub 5 should be and is the coefficient on the x to the fifth term. So that is a positive 8. Very good. All right. Cool. I am going to, you know what? Do, do, do. Let me go back to my colors here for just a second and talk about this. I'm going to go pick my purple all over again. And I'm going to say my leading coefficient here. Oh, no, I'm going to say my... I didn't ever did a leading coefficient up there, did I? Okay, well that kind of rots. What can I do here? I can pick a green. No, I can pick a red. That's cool. Leading coefficient, or degree here. Degree here. Now I'll go to that purple again. And I will hit my leading coefficient here, negative 1. Leading coefficient, negative 1. I will go for my green, just like we did a minute ago. And we will say that my constant term is this negative 6. Constant term, negative 6. And I happen to have picked a sub 5. So a sub 5 was the coefficient to the x to the fifth term which was a positive 8. And these all match up. Okay, let's shrink this devil. And let's move it right up over here out of our way. Is that okay? Shrink a little more. Get it to about the same size. Sounds good. Progressively, I'm going to get harder and harder in the examples. Here is nothing. Here is example 3. I will start off with f of x equals, uh, let me see, how could I do this? Okay, how about this one? 2x plus 1, in parentheses, is a binomial. Open parentheses, 5 minus 3x. Close parentheses, open parentheses, x minus 4. So I have 1, 2, 3 binomials multiplied together. I am going to be looking for my leading coefficient, my degree, I should say my degree first, and then my leading coefficient, then my constant term, and then I'll pick another term for you to figure out what it is. So, if intuitively you could imagine what this would look like if you multiplied it all out and put this in that polynomial standard form, I can call it expanded form if you like, as opposed to this is called factored form. But I would like everything to be in something called expanded form so that I can read my degree, my leading coefficient, my constant term, and everything real easily. Okay, well, let's go ahead and do this then. Let's expand it. f of x equals, I'm going to leave the 2x plus 1 in parentheses, and I am going to distribute uh, these two binomials, which means I'm going to FOIL. So I have 5 times x, giving me 5x. I have 5 times a negative 4, giving me negative 20. I have negative 3x times x, giving me negative 3x squared. And I have negative 3x times negative 4, giving me a positive 12x. I am going to clean this up before I continue doing any more distributing. So f of x equals 2x plus 1 multiplied by. Now I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to combine any like terms and I'm going to put my exponents down in descending order. So the highest exponent I see anywhere is this 2 right here. 
So I'm going to start off with negative 3x squared. I'm going to combine the 5x with the 12x because they're like terms and get positive 17x and then minus 20. Now I have this binomial and this trinomial, which means I need to multiply all of that out again. Let's see where I'm going. I'm scroll up a little bit. So I'm going to have f of x is equal to. Now I'm going to take this 2x and multiply through by this trinomial first. It's going to give me negative 6x cubed plus 34 oops, sorry, x squared minus 40x. That's 2x multiplied by negative 3x squared to give me negative 6x cubed. The 2x again multiplied by the 17x to give me this 34x squared right here. And then the 2x again multiplied by negative 20 to give me the negative 40x right here. Okay. And now I'm going to multiply this positive 1 through by this whole trinomial. And that's going to just make me copy the trinomial. So negative 3x squared plus 17x minus 20. And again, I am going to clean this up. Okay, f of x equals. The highest exponent I see anywhere is this cube right here. So therefore, I'm just going to start off with negative 6x cubed. I have a squared term here of 34x x squared, and I have a negative 3x squared. That's going to give me a positive 31x squared. And then I have negative 40x with positive 17x. Um, Yeah, and that is going to give me a negative 23x. And let me see, I guess minus 20 on the end, that's about it, right? So now I should be able to answer anything I want to answer. My degree is going to be something, my leading coefficient is going to be something, and my constant term is going to be something. Well, let's take a peek here. My degree... Let's change my color here. I think we went here. Did we go that one? I think we went that one. My degree here is 3. So I am going to write a 3 and I'm going to color code my degree. My degree is 3. Let's get the whole thing. Degree is 3. Leading coefficient is done in my purple. So my leading coefficient here is negative 6. Here is negative 6. And again for my purple. And my other green is going to give me this constant term down here on the end, which is negative 20. And I will match that green again. Now let me just ask you another question. Let's see. What is a sub 1? a sub 1. a sub 1 should be the coefficient, and it is the coefficient, of the x to the first term. This is the coefficient of the x to the first term. And that is right there. So even though you don't see x to the first, you have to understand that that's an x to the first and the coefficient is indeed positive 17. And we will pop that on color. So you can match these things up. Does that sound good? Let's go ahead and just erase a little bit of this. I didn't mean to erase that zero, so I'll put it back in. Don't fret. It's going. Okay. And we will shrink this up a little bit. Put this over here. Sounds good. So we have examples one, two, and three so far. So let's start example four.
and I'm going to get tougher and tougher with you. I told you that, so that shouldn't come as a surprise with you. f of x equals 3x plus 5 quantity squared multiplied by 4 minus 2x quantity cubed multiplied by 10x minus 7 just 10x minus 7. So to the first, I suppose you could say. This is considered factored form as well. I really don't want to have to multiply all this out. If I wanted to put this in expanded form, I really would have to multiply 3x, my, 3x plus 5 by itself because it's squared. I would have to multiply 4 minus 2x times 4 minus 2x times another 4 minus 2x and then I would have to multiply the 10x minus 7. And by the time I multiply these two, then these two, then these two, and then these things, uh, 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 I would be a whole mess that I have no intention of doing. So I want to come up with just some kind of a shortcut so that I can figure out what my degree would be, what my leading coefficient would be, what my constant term would be. And I won't ask you any additional questions after that. Okay, so uh, let's see. Let's see. My degree is going to come from the highest power of x that I would end up having after I did all this expanding and cleaning up. So I just want to think about this. I have a 3x here. That's going to go into building a high x term. So is that 3x. So is that negative 2x and that negative 2x and that negative 2x and that 10x. So maybe you can see, but I am taking all my x terms and including whether they're positive or negative, and I am going to multiply them all together, and that's going to build me my first term that would have the highest exponent and contain my leading coefficient. So I want, I'm just going to do something like this. Even though I know I'm not accurate as far as like the whole entire problem, this gives me enough. So I have 3x times 3x times negative 2x times another negative 2x times another negative 2x and then times 10x. So can you tell me whether this answer would be positive or negative right here? I have one, two, three negative signs. So if I have three negative signs, two of them will pair off to make a positive and I will have a negative left over. So my leading coefficient is going to be negative. So I have this 3 here times this 3 here, making 9. I have this 2 here, this 2 here, and this 2 here. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. And I know that 9 times 8 is 72. 72 times this 10 over here is going to give me 720 as my leading coefficient. And now, what x's would I have? I would have an x here, another x here, a third x, a fourth x, a fifth x, and a sixth x all getting multiplied by each other. So I don't know what this function is, but I do know that this f of x is going to start off at negative 720 x to the 6, blah, blah, blah. So therefore, my degree is a 6 degree is a 6 and that matches my degree color here degree is 6 my leading coefficient is this negative 720 so let's write negative 720 color you with purple and now the last thing, a sub 0, I really don't have to do that. Um, it's not pertaining to this information. It's going to be pertaining to something we do later, but it won't be that bad. However, I would have to have this 5 twice. So I'm definitely looking at 25 from 5 being squared. I would have this 4 cubed. 4 cubed. So let me just back this up for a second. I would have 5 twice, I would have 4 three times, 
and I would have that negative 7 once. So I'm going to be a little tricky here. 5 times 4 is 20, and then this 5 times this 4 is also 20, and then 4 times 7 is 28, but negative. So 20 times 20 is 400 times negative 28. This gives me, let's see, 0, 0, 32, carry a 3, 1, 1, and it should be negative. I don't know if I can squeeze a negative in there, but that would be my constant term, negative 1, 1, 2, 0, 0. Yucky, yucky, and more yucky, right? Oh, well, it is what it is. That would be my constant term, and that would be from here. It would be taking this 5, this 4, 5 squared, 4 cubed, times negative 7. Alrighty. Alright, we're going to call it a day on that one. Wrap that up. Let me see. Do, do, do. I like doing this. It's fun. You can always refer back to any part of your video. And... I think that's kind of cool that I can do that. Alrighty. Let's get a little tougher some more. Want to get some more tough? Here is example five. I do that almost every time. F of x is given as negative 5x cubed multiplied by 2x minus 1 multiplied by 4x plus 3 quantity squared multiplied by 6 minus x quantity cubed. And now this time, I'm only going to be asking for my degree and my leading coefficient. We're going to leave that constant term out of the question for right now. So what are these answers? Let's see what we have. Uh, let's see, I have a negative 5x cubed right here that's going to have to play around with my highest x. So negative 5x cubed. I have a 2x in here, and since this exponent isn't seen, it's understood to be a 1. Whoops. I have this 4x, and it's going to happen twice, so 4x, 4x. And I have this negative x, but it's going to happen three times. It's going to get multiplied three times. So I need to multiply all this out. And that will be my first term in the expanded form of my polynomial function. So let's see what I have. Would the answer be positive or negative? Let's see, how many, how many negative signs do I have? I have one, two, three, four negative signs. So I'm pretty sure that answer is going to be positive, isn't it? So this gives me positive. Well, that was kind of silly to do. All right, so this answer is positive. I'm going to just write it down here. Positive. And now I need to multiply this 5 by this 2. That makes 10. I'll just write 10. 4 times 4 is 16. And 10 times 16 gives me 160. x to the... Now let's count how many x's we have. There's 3 x's here, so that's x cubed, 3 x's. 4x's, 5x's, 6x's, 7x's, 8x's, 9x's all together. So x to the 9th. That's kind of crazy. Isn't that kind of crazy? So my degree is a 9, and my leading coefficient would be a positive 160. Shoo! All right. Looks good. We want to color code everything nice like we were? Let's go ahead. Bring this back into play. This was my 9, which is the my degree, and the leading coefficient being 160, coming from this. Okay. Well, let's see. I'm going to squish this. Don't mean to do that. Don't mean to do that either. Let's try that again. Am 
very nice. Very nice, very nice. Sounds good. You know what? I noticed up here that I don't have these answers boxed. It's kind of crazy because I'm really big at boxing my answers. I think I'm going to just take a little pencil and box that. Box that. Back up here on example one. Box that. Come back over here at example two. Box that. And I would just leave the top going because I was just asking a bunch of things on there. All right, you ready for example six? Here we go. Example six. F of x equals x multiplied by five minus x cubed multiplied by, oh, I don't like that cube. That was ice crazy. There's a cube. Multiplied by x plus 3, quantity, and then x, negative x minus 1, quantity cubed. I would like my degree, and I would like my leading coefficient. Alrighty, let's get busy. If I were to expand all this, which I don't want to expand it, but if I were to, I would have this x multiplied by this negative x. Now, how many times would I see this negative x happen? Three times. So negative x, negative x, negative x, multiplied by this x. How many times? Just once, because I don't see any exponent there. It has to be a 1, just like the first one was a 1 as well. And then multiplied by this negative x, how many times? Three times. Negative x, negative x, negative x. So it looks like I have lots of negatives. How many negatives do I have here? Looks like I have three negatives right here and three negatives right here. Makes a total of six negatives, which means that my leading coefficient will indeed be positive. All my, all my little coefficients are ones here, so it's just positive one x to the, and how many x's do I have? pretty sure I have 8. So I am looking at the um, degree as being 8. So that is right here. My degree is 8. And my leading coefficient is just going to be that positive one. I'll put a plus sign for you. Why not? So here is positive 1. Alrighty, it's pretty much the end of it. Just practicing a few times. Okay, and we'll move that up and over. Line it up nice. That's pretty good. All right, so you see we. Uh, let me see how many more do I have. I'll just give you one or two more. Here's example seven. F of x is equal to x plus eight quantity squared, two x plus one, five minus x, x minus six. What would my degree be? And what would my leading coefficient be? Let's take a peek and do it. See this x right here? I would have an x down twice. So x, x. See this 2x? I would have a 2x down one time. Because my exponent is 1, that's the only time you'll see that binomial. And this negative x right here? That's only going to go down one time also. And this x is only going down one time also. So this is going to give me negative 2x to the fifth, which makes my degree a 5 and my leading coefficient a negative 2. And since I have my purple highlighter, I'm going to highlight my leading coefficient first and then my degree. Very nice. I will box these answers and shrink it. 
Yikes. That was kind of nuts. Let's try that one more time. Ah, I lie. Let's try two more times. Okay. Very good. Alrighty. Okay, get off there. Alright, we got room for one more example, don't we? Let's do example eight. Alright, I've lost my mind here. So have lost my mind. Okay. Not sure what's going on with this thing. There we go. This wasn't taken. F of X equals. Well, let's start with negative 4X cubed multiplied by 2X minus 1 multiplied by 5 minus x quantity squared multiplied by, let's just make something up like x minus 3 quantity cubed. There you go. All right, again, I just need my degree and my leading coefficient. So this term right here is going to give me negative 4x cubed. This term right here is going to give me just plain old 2x. And it's just 2x once, because I only have that factor once. And I'm going to have this negative x right here twice. So negative x, negative x. And I'm going to have this positive x here three times. So x, x, x. Alrighty, how many negatives do you see? I see three negatives. So three negatives is going to give you a negative result. I have 4 times 2, which is 8. And how many x's do we see? Let's not forget that this x right here counts for 3. So this is x cubed. Let's see it. x cubed, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, ninth. Is this x to the ninth? That's kind of crazy. So my degree is 9. My leading coefficient is negative 8. Okay, there's my 9. There's my degree. And my leading coefficient is negative 8. Looks good, I hope. Box that sucker. And let's do some condensing. Get it. I just want to see. I have a feeling this one just looks a little big, doesn't it? Make that a little bit smaller. It's nice. And do the same thing with eight, just a hair. So we should be able to look at all of these examples and question it. Come right back to the top. Now it's on polynomial functions. We should know what a polynomial function is going to look like. This is expanded form. Let's not forget that. Expanded. And when a polynomial function is in expanded form, that's when we get the best read on what the leading coefficient is and what the degree is and what all the other coefficients and constants are. Okay. I have a few examples here. Let's see. I'm going to get my color highlight out here so I can mark this 5. Missed that before. Everything looks good. I think I'll actually do that. Do that. Okay. So we go through. Lots of examples. You can stop wherever you'd like. 
And why don't we just wrap it up right there. In the next video, we're going to start talking about foreign behavior of a polynomial function. And it's going to be the leading coefficient and the degree of the polynomial function that's going to make that determination. So I will see you on the next round. All right? Talent out.